Welcome back to the series on the ICF core competencies, the new ones here that we've established starting, I guess, officially in 2021. And right now we are headed into uh, number six, Listens Actively with Sakina Gordon-Jones. Uh, she's coming to us from North Carolina today. Uh, she's an MCC and a mentor coach. Thank you, Sakina, for being here. It is a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Well, I like to dive straight in. So why don't you start by telling us kind of the gist of what this competency is about? Yeah, I think listening actively is an essential competency for coaches. Uh, <clears throat> being able to hear our clients and having our clients feel heard are, to me, the most essential of all of the competencies, because if we don't hear them, it's literally impossible for us to help them to move forward. It's literally impossible to help them to gain clarity. Part of our goal with listening actively is to not hear for our sakes as the coaches, but to help the client to hear themselves as well. Yes, um, that's great. I love your, your distinction there of kind of almost three types of listening, uh, listening so that, that you can, can hear them, that they can hear themselves, but also that they can feel heard. Um, so uh, this is great. This is very similar to the, the older core competencies. Uh, this was number five, um, active listening. So what's the update here? A lot of the other core competencies have seemed to change um, a lot more. This one seems to be a little more similar. Yeah, I think, you know, with the change of the new competencies, something really crucial has shifted, um, something really prominent, and that is it's focusing on the verb, on the, the being and the doing of the coach, as opposed to the noun, the what they are doing, right? So I think the old competency was active listening, you know, which is a thing, right? It's a thing to do listens actively speaks to the being and the doing of the coach. And so I think when you consider that little shift, it really does mean that we are participating as partners and part of what we give to the relationship is our ability to hear fully what is being said verbally what is being communicated physically and even viscerally, and to be able to reflect that. Yes, wonderful. And I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the, the difference there with the, the verbs, because I'm looking through and I'm establishing, maintaining, cultivating, um, maintains, listens. So it is um, much more, I guess, active and uh, focused on what the coach is doing. So um, thank you for drawing that distinction. I hadn't noticed that yet. Yeah, and how they're being. Right. Yes, exactly. So um, let's talk about how they're being when they are being really good at this. Say you as a mentor coach are listening to an MCC level coach. Um, so what is what is that coach doing that you can um, kind of glean from a tape, say, um, when they are doing this really, really well? Yeah, I think what shows up is their level of attunement to the client. Um, one of the things we listen for as a mentor coach is how is the coach responding to what the client offers, right? How do the coach respond to what is shared, what is coming up? And, you know, when it's done poorly, it's I'm really listening very tactically so that I can move on to the next thing, right? I'm listening so that I listen and I can move you. Where when you're doing this really well, you're so present with your client that you are hearing nuances in what's being shared, right? You are making connections in what's coming out of their mouth and what's happening around you. So you're, you're really listening to the system, not just to the words. You're listening to what their body is saying and maybe not saying. Um, you are picking up on things because of your attunement that may be different for the client. You know, one of the new things in, in the updated competency is 
that the coach has to consider the client's context. That means listening really empathetically, listening from the client's perspective, not just yours as the coach, so that the experiences that are being shared are not, you're not filtering them through your context, but actually empathetically listening to them through your client's context and helping your client to hear that. Yes, and this definitely starts to get into some of the the, the um, additional emphasis on cultural competency that's been becoming much much more clear in uh, in the core competencies, but also in the ethics. Um, and there's there's a series that I did coincidentally on that. So if you want to check out the series on the ethics, you can just click right up here, and you'll see that series too. But um, let's let's dig in a little more, and I want to hear a little more about what specifically you see in a tape, either examples of when it's done well, like what does a question sound like that a coach gives, or examples of when it's not done well, like what kind of question shows up or what kind of statement shows up um, when someone, when you're watching something and you were like, ooh, that was someone missed an opportunity there to actively listen, or someone really did great at actively listening there. Yeah, what you're, what we're looking for here and listening for is What is the coach noticing? What is the coach observing? And how is the coach reflecting that back to the client? So, you know, the client is is sharing whatever they may be saying. And what we want them to be able to do is to hear that in a way that causes them to disrupt their thinking. So if you notice, for example, a client saying, I'm really excited about this opportunity that I might get in this promotion, you're hearing the words. And if you look on just the words, if you listen to just the words, it's like the client is saying they're exciting. They're excited about this opportunity. But everything else that you're hearing doesn't match, right? So if you notice that, and if you're listening actively, you're putting yourself into a space to really notice. And you can say, you know, I'm noticing that while you're saying you're excited, your body has doesn't have seem to have a response to that excitement. You know, what do you think about that? Right. Um, it allows the client to really begin to see, yeah, there is something else here. Right. Um, So you're noticing in context with what is being said or not said is really important. And so you want the, you don't want to see the client, the coach miss those opportunity to help the client see and hear themselves. Um, Another example is, let's say you notice this um, fidgeting, right? Uh, A client is bouncing their knees or they're They're starting to speak really with a lot of energy. You know, it's like this is probably, you know, just a little thing that I have to think about. But they're saying it with such sheer excitement in their voice or their body is just, you know, like tensing up. These are all important things for us to help our client, for us to notice and help our client with. Sometimes it's maybe contradictory statements. Maybe it's not the body language, but it's listening deeper to hear, you know, I, I think that I could make a, a really good entrepreneur. And I've been thinking about that for the last 15 years, that this is something I want to do. Okay. We're making an observation here that 15 years of thinking about it and not doing it, but being exciting, you know, wow, help me understand how you connect those two. Or what might be coming up for you if you've been sitting with this for 15 years? What might be holding you back? What, you know, so there are the questions that emerge from a coach attend to and respond to the client only if they can listen actively, because that's where you will pick up what is really being communicated. And it allows you to acknowledge and explore not only the words, but definitely you want to explore the words, but you also want to be able to explore all of those nonverbal cues, um, things that you might not even be able to give a language to, you know, 
energy that you're you're sensing. And it's okay to even say, you know, I, I'm sensing this as you talk or as I notice X. So this is really in many ways the gift that you bring as the coach and why it's so important to not miss opportunities that will only come if you really stay in that mode of listening actively, focusing on the client so wholly that you hear them through multiple neural pathways. Yes, yeah, so what I'm hearing here that part of listens actively is really about the questions that you ask. So we used to have powerful questions. Um, so powerful questions is kind of here in listens actively and also in the next one that we're about to head off to. Um, but um, yeah, just comment on that just really briefly. Yeah, it's a it's really a great insight. And it's, again, part of the nuance in, in the competencies and what we expect the coach to be able to flow. When you're listening, if you're serving your client with what you're hearing, you are reflecting that back to them in some way. And that could be a direct reflection of what they said, a mirroring, if you will. It could be summarizing or paraphrasing what they've said. But it also is the inquiries that you make to help them hear what's being said or to even clarify what was heard. So there is a fair amount of inquiry that will happen here that should come as a direct response to what the client offered. So that actually takes us nicely into the next uh, core competency, which is number seven, uh, which is about uh, evokes awareness. Um, and that is the next video for our viewers to watch. So thank you so much, Sakina, for being here and for sharing with us. Um, and to the viewer, uh, when you're ready, you can head right up here to watch uh, Giuseppe and I talk about evoking awareness in the next video. And if this is where you just started this series on this video, you can head down here and you can watch from the beginning. Thanks.